Hey guys, this is Pretty Joe. Uh, this is the fourth tutorial um, in building a game with Unity, where we'll be going over building a couple new projectiles and the particle editor. Um, this is the third time I've tried recording this video, so I'm really hoping it works this time. Uh, it doesn't corrupt on me, because uh, that's never fun. All right. Well, anyways. <clears throat> Um, before we get started, uh, let's import a package, and this will be the particles package that Unity gives us. So, uh, once it decompresses, we have this nice list here, uh, a bunch of textures, and uh, some prefabs for us. Uh, so, go ahead and import them all. <sighs> I really hope this doesn't corrupt again. Um, alright, okay, so it's in, um, before we do anything with the uh, projectiles and uh, particles, let's create two empty C-sharp uh, C scripts, uh, one's going to be called player, and one's going to be called enemy. Uh, enemy. Uh, these are going to be empty only because we aren't using them. Um, we aren't physically doing anything with them uh, in this tutorial, but some scripts access them. Um, that's not what I want. Enemy. Alright. So, enemy. And make sure they extend the uh, base entity. Alright. Um, yeah, so that's good. Uh, we'll be filling these two in uh, in the next week's tutorial. Okay, so now that we have that done, uh, Let's go through and see what we all have here. Um, just because we're going to be adding particle effects to two projectiles, uh, they're going to be a rocket and just a tracking rocket. So they're, they can just share the uh, particle effects if we want them to. Um, we'd probably use smoke trail for the rocket. Yeah. Let's have that trailing behind something and... It'll look like a rocket, at least close enough. Um, let's go ahead and make a prefab, or create a cube first. And then we'll create a prefab. And we'll call it rocket. And let's create another one called tracking rocket, just so that's done and over with. Okay. And we're going to want to drag smoke trail onto the cube so that it follows it around. And then reset its position so it's directly on there. Awesome. And then we'll just drag it onto the rocket and the tracking rocket prefab. And that's good to go. Um, Alright. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, we should also create um, a quick particle effect. Uh, I'm just going to rush through this one because after I'm done building the scripts, that's when I'm going to go through uh, each object in the particle editor. Uh, so I'm just going to make something really quickly. Uh, so I'll just give it some smoke. Size group four, sure. Uh, one shot. Where's that material? Go to smoke. And then. Um. Uh, we'll shrink that down a bit. 
Hmm. Um, sure. That should be good. Yeah, that's good. So we'll just call this, we'll create a new prefab, call it uh, Rocket Explosion. And then we'll just drag it on there. Simple as that. Okay. Now that we got those prefabs set up, uh, we're going to create two more scripts. Um, one is going to be called Rocket. And then we'll create another one called Tracking Rocket. And then just open both those up. Alright. And before we do anything in the Rocket and Tracking Rocket, we're going to have to go back into our Projectile class. And if you're coming straight from the last video, uh, you'll notice that I've changed something in the Start and Update function. Uh, what you'll have is just this, just void start and then what it's doing. What I added is uh, protected virtual void. Um, basically what it does is this is a protected function now, so anything that extends from projectile will also gain this function. And virtual basically means that we can add functionality to the, the rocket and It'll still be able to. Uh, <clears throat> we'll still be able to call all of this if we want to. Also, we can create um, arrays of just type projectile and throw rockets and tracking rockets in here, um, and then we'll be able to call these functions, and it'll work perfectly fine. Uh, so once you get this in. What we're going to do is uh, go into our rocket class, change this to rocket, and then extend projectile. And we'll create a public game object called rocket explosion. And this is where we're going to put that really quick uh, smoke effect in. Um, now, for start, what we want to do is we want to keep all this stuff and add a few new things. So what we do is, in order to do this, we have to override the function. So override protected void start. And then let's just increase the damage, multiply it by 2. And then let's check if we put anything in rocket explosion. So if rocket explosion is equal to null, uh, debug.log error. Uh, hey, we don't have anything. There is no rock game object attached to rocket explosion. Wow. And then, in order to get all the functionality of projectile, we have to call base.start. And it's as simple as that. Um, we don't need to do anything with the update function, because everything that the projectile is doing in the update function is exactly what we're going to be doing here. So there's no point in adding anything to it. What we do need to do is... Uh, change the on trigger enter function and we need we need to make it virtual too for uh, so that uh, the tracking rocket can also use the functionality so on trigger enter collider other base entity other object equals to other dot game object dot get component yep base entity oh man 
if other object is not equal to null, and if L. Wow, I do that a lot. If other object dot get type is not equal to our instigator type going to want the other object to take damage uh, we want to instantiate our rocket explosion And we'll just give it a basic uh, rotation, since uh, particle effects are usually billboard, and it won't matter. Uh, we'll also destroy this game object. And rocket is pretty much as simple as that. Um, yeah, that's it for the rocket class.